So I choose my instructional materials based on availability. And a lot of times, because my lessons are repetitive and I want easy access, I want things that the kids see every day. So I have my whiteboard, I have my markers, I have books that I use, I reuse, I use them for different things. I might use them for colors, I might use them for shapes. Um, white paper, anything that is easily accessible for me not expensive, it doesn't have to cost a lot, education doesn't have to cost a lot, knowledge is free, I use my computer whenever possible, the kids love the technology, uh, just incorporating that. Um, the same thing with uh, childproof, a lot of the things, the markers, things like that. My plastic, my plastic letters and numbers have been the best investment ever because I have used them for multiple lessons, uh, and you just use them over and over and over again. I chose them for exactly the reasons that I just mentioned, that I can use them, I can use them over again, I can use them in different lessons, at different times, with different students. I guess from an economical standpoint, I can just reuse them and they're great. So I can incorporate them in different lessons. The kids can use them. The kids can play with the markers. They can use them. They can put the words together. So um, yeah, and, and a keyboard, maybe not everybody would be able to use a keyboard. However, they can use DVD, they can use CDs, they can, they can find music you know, pretty easily and incorporate it into a lesson. I like them because I can reuse them. I can use them over and again. They're not expensive and basically anybody can get them. And, it, and actually if something breaks, that's fine. I can just, I can, I can substitute very quickly, easily, and it doesn't cost a lot. So everybody can use them. No, I don't think, you know, oftentimes teachers talk about they need the latest, the latest, I don't need the latest because I need to teach the foundations and the basics for my children and those are simple and those are easy to easily accessible so I need the time and I simply need just the basics to be able to create good lessons well the students see them every day and so they feel comfortable with them. They actually don't feel threatened by them. They see the markers, they use them every day, they use the plastic ABCs, they, it, they're incorporated into their life. So it's not as though they need to learn something new by me presenting something new. And actually when I, when I do bring in things that are new, uh, oftentimes it's things that we've made. Uh, when we work with our shapes and things like that, I will have the students make them. And it's often more meaningful student makes a triangle. It's not a perfect triangle, but it's still a triangle and they get the basics so they understand. So oftentimes we'll just make our own materials and reuse them, laminate them, and the kids will remember them. I noticed they were looking at some of the pictures that had been done prior. Were those things that were um, student work? Oh, wow. Uh, the pictures for the ABCs? Yeah. Oh, they, we've done that from the beginning of the year. We've picked a letter each week and we've worked on it and we just will do our first I will introduce the students to the word or the letter let's say it was letter A then I have uh, different pictures and I will present all the A words then I will put words that are not A and mix them with the A and then we'll develop a song based on the letter A and the kids will draw I will I purposely ask the children to draw and and you'll see by the children, some are able to draw. I know some of them are not able to draw, but it's not the point. The point is, is to have the student even participate at whatever level they're able to. And that's why I ask them. Even I know that I have a little boy, he, he, I know he can't draw a circle. But I ask him purpose, purposely, do the circle. We will appreciate it. We will like your work. It's the effort that is, it, is the most important.